Instead, what works really, really well in vision is learning by contrasting. So this is contrastive learning. And uh, we talked a little bit about this in last lecture as well, but uh, it's extremely general and powerful. And one of the core components within uh, contrastive learning is positive pairs. And here we just say that we believe that concepts that appear in the same image are more related and close to each other in meaning than concepts that appear in different images. And that, of course, is not always true, right? There can be a dog in this image, there can be another, uh, you know, another image where there's dogs. But when you have enough data, this is true statistically, on average. When you just take random, two different random images, it's more statistically probable that the things that appear in the same image are more related than those that appear in different images. And, uh, of course, so what we do is just that we can now download as many images as we want from the internet online. There's unlimited amount of images. And we just take an image, we'll create two different crops randomly, and we'll say, okay, you guys are more related than crops on other images. Um, and kind of it's defined by this co-occurrence, right? And you want to be able to say as well that if in this example of this uh, owner or human being with a leash, right? That it's further away from something else. You need, really need to contrast this with something. Because if you just say that you want to map it close to things that appear in the same image, right? You can, they basically it can collapse because if, it, if it's not also forced to push it away from other things, it can just learn, the model can just learn to map everything to the same representation and then everything will be close, right? And closeness has no meaning. So for closeness and similarity to, to have meaning, you also need to have dissimilarity and distance, right? So that's why you need to be able to say like, well, I am closer to a dog than I am to a woman or a cat. And, and also what I think is worth pointing out here is that you actually don't have to appear in the same image as something, but you can still, you can still be very, very similar in terms of meaning, right? It's like people that have, people that share a lot of friends are similar people. So even if you have two different uh, species of dogs, right, that never appear in the same image, as long as they to appear together with other thing, similar things, right, then they become close. So if you have two different species of dogs and both appears with frisbees and owners with leashes and dog food, then they will be close because they appear with, in similar companies, in contexts. So it's a very, very powerful way to learn uh, meaning of visual concepts. And a little bit more specifically how the model is trained is that it's basically fed these different crops. It doesn't know, right, which ones are paired and which ones are not paired. We only know that because we created data, but the model doesn't know. That's how it learns. But it's feed these options and we say like, well, look at this uh, crop of this human being that with a leash. Now, when you've seen this, tell me which one is its positive pair and tell me which ones are its negative pairs. That's how it's trained. And here, you know, if it's able to start this thing, you understand this thing, right? It understands that, okay, if a person is walking with a leash, it's probably a dog at the end of the leash, not a cat, right? And it seems sensible. Uh, and this is perhaps quite simple, but in the real case, it has, you know, one positive pair to locate among 10,000 negative ones, for example. Then it becomes really hard, and to do that well, it has to have a really sophisticated understanding of, of visual concepts. And of course, we can do this anywhere, basically, where we're able to create positive and negative pairs. We can learn by this contrasting. So we can do this also for text, where we just take a text sequence, we create basically two different augmentations of version by just creating two different masks version, right? And then we can create a negative pair by just sampling a random sequence somewhere else in, on, from the internet, right? And then we'll train this contrastive setup to push this representation for, or, you know, to identify the positive pair among the negative pairs. And actually this works really well for language as well. So contrastive learning is a very general way of learning meaning in a lot of different modalities.